All right, so more refined painting. Notice I haven't done anything with the hair, the neck, the, really the ear. So there's a lot more that needs to be done. And there's nothing to do but to do it. I try not to get too zoomed in. I mostly work at around 25% opacity, or not opacity, 25% uh, zoom. You can see that in the corner. And you just want to have a lot of energy as you're covering ground because you're making a, an interesting paint texture. This is also true for like the fur of dogs. I'm doing a cat in the morning sex, section and a lot of this kind of layering of long strokes. Get that texture of a cat, cat's fur. And we can all get something turned in for digital painting by midnight tonight. We're an hour into the class now. And in about half an hour, we'll just turn in what we've got. All right. So I'll do two more videos, this one and another one, and try to get it as close to a finish as I can. But a lot of that just has to do with addressing the areas I've been ignoring. And then on time outside of class, we could always return and work on this to improve our digital painting skills. But for the rest of class, we're going to focus on our final project, since that matters the most for our portfolio and for our grade for the semester. because this is just our introduction to digital painting. We don't need to master it. It takes a long time and a lot of practice to, to feel comfortable with it. But if you find you just really enjoy it, you had a lot of fun with this, then it's a technique that you might explore further with your final project. And now you know how to set it up. You want to use as big a brush as you can to do the job you're trying to do. Especially if you make it pressure sensitive, because then you have a lot of options. If you're trying to cover a lot of ground, you can always make your brush just a little bit bigger. But you still want to vary color and textures, edges, as much as you can. We started this palette off to the side for colors we often use, right? That can be helpful.
Again, it's nice to have this navigator to show me what the big picture is of this hairline I'm creating. I'm making it a little bit too defined. Soften it up a little. All right. And it helps a lot to have good lighting in your reference. But remember, you can always use levels on your reference and improve the, the midtones, the shadows. to get better lighting. All right, photo piece starting to lag on me a little bit because I'm doing a lot. So I'm going to hit Command S. I'm going to close tabs I don't need open. And that should help does. And if it still legs on you, you can close it. You can even close the browser. Reopen it. Open Photo P. And bring in our newest PSD. And then you just got to set up your brush using the built-in one, the noisy marker one. And then I'm setting up the brush settings for pin pressure control. I don't think I really want scatter turned on. And then taking down opacity to it in the 60s to 70s for refined painting. And remember, I have all my other layers locked. The only unlocked layer is the layer I'm painting on. So I don't accidentally paint on a new layer. That can so easily happen. And it's just a big headache, a waste of time. And my left hand is just hovering over Option to steal colors. And I'm mostly stealing them from myself now, but I can also take them from reference. Put a lot of nice colorful references to take colors from.
and I'd like to have my navigator open. So go to Window Navigator, which is this little compass, because it shows me the overall image. So as I'm shading in the hair, I can see its effect on the overall image. And you want to use as big a brush as you can to do the work you need. So if you think you can get away with a bigger size, especially if it's pressure sensitive, go for it. Not everything needs to be super tight detail, which is why I mostly work at about 25% zoomed in. But I'm going, I'm trying to build up a complex paint film that by the time you're zoomed in at 100% or 200%, the pixels are interesting together. They're not just layers of clear pixels on top of each other. They, they start to blend, start to have subtlety to them. All right, so I got the hairline now. Now I want to work with the ear. Ears are very distinctive for likeness. Pretty darn important. So you don't want to, just because they're not as fun to do, you don't want to ignore them. I'm going to try to mix some of those colors. Get some strong color notes in there. on her earring. Honestly, it's just a lot of scribbling. But in the right direction, in the right places, the right size, with the right amount of opac opacity. 